We have three different applications for modulating actuation. Electric actuator modulating using a fully motorised valve, control valve, operating a ball valve or butterfly valve. We have pneumatic actuator with a pneumatic electric controller which is controlling a double eight acting actuator and ball valve and we have a pneumatic actuator complete with a solenoid valve with five three center center control which we can inch the actuator opening and closing so we have a double acting actuator and ball valve or butterfly valve so when you say solenoid valve you can also have that in a lever configuration correct we can also operate that as a lever if necessary I can draw the lever, it can, wouldn't make any difference, but the control can be the same. So we'd have the lever, lever operation over here, which would do the same function as what you've seen up here. So the lever would still centralise, it has a automatic spring to centre, and this is also spring to centre as well. But I'll go through the first one over here. So with the, this is the more the standard component, I would say, that's probably most applications. So we have a motorised actuator and the signal inputs can be either 4 to 20 milliamp or selectable via a dip switch inside the actuator, 1 to 5 volt DC or 2 to 10 volt DC. Now the input signal of 4 to 20 milliamp will allow us to have infinite control between 0 and 90 degree rotation of the ball valve. The ball valve can also have a maybe a 60 degree or 30 degree V port to give us much more finer control or we can use it just as a standard valve. A butterfly valve can also go there as well. As the unit signal is varied between 4 to 20 milliamp, the valve will correspondingly move that position and at the same time give an output signal that will give a 4 to 20 milliamp to feedback to your PLC. This will confirm to the PLC the actual positioning of the ball valve in relationship to the input signal to servo loop feedback to the unit. This can come in a variety of different sizes of course. If we go to the pneumatic actuator, it has a 4 to 20 milliamp controller. It also has an air supply. Now this is probably more durable for a lot of operations. The limiting factor with this type of actuator, though very accurate, is that its duty cycle is about 75%. It can't be motoring and hunting all the time. It's got to have an inbuilt dead band situation to stop it hunting. Uh, otherwise the heat dissipation can't get away from the actuator. It's a motor inside a housing. <clears throat> but with a pneumatic actuator you can make it work all the time. Uh, 4 to 20 milliamp signal is going to be your input signal over here and 4 to 20 milliamp is going to be your output signal. It requires an air supply, filtered air supply, instrument air supply and the ball valve is connected to a double acting pneumatic actuator which is controlled opening and closing from by two air signals. This controller is mounted on top of the actuator with an interface, a Namur interface and the signal comes in, the actuator moves in a certain direction, when the signal is stopped the air supply is locked off to both sides of the actuators via the internal controller here and at the same time we've got a 4 to 20 milliamp control signal going out to verify the actuator's position to your PLC. Another method over here which Ryan just mentioned is a pneumatic actuator controlling by a 5-3 center center valve. This valve can be either lever lever or double solenoid. <clears throat> In this situation the valve is controlled by also a double acting pneumatic actuator with a ball valve or butterfly valve and it's a more economical way of overcoming the problem of positioning. Maybe not to the infinite degree that we're getting with these two but it'll give a form of control at a much more economical um, dollar value. So we've got our 5-3 valve up here. In other words, we have a solenoid at one end and a solenoid at the other. They're sprung 
there's no signal on either end or the other, it's sprung to the central position. In the central position, all five ports are locked off. When the five ports are locked off, the pneumatic actuator, double acting, will lock in the position that it's held at, locking the ball valve in that spot. If we put a signal on this port here, the valve will move over and the actuator will start moving. Take the signal off, it'll lock back to the central port. Signal on the other side, the valve will move in that direction. Take the signal off, it'll lock back to the central port as well. Normally, we would also put exhaust flow controls on here to give a, a slower speed and give this a more uh, time for the unit to react and to position it more easily. <clears throat> With the lever lever, uh, it's the same thing, so we push the lever over and the unit will go and the, the actuator will go out, let the lever go and the spring will take it to the central position. Any questions? Yeah, I've got one list there. You've got double active cylinders up there, or actuators. Uh, is there anything stopping you having a spring return so you still get a fail safe and we're just balancing against the spring pack? Nothing to stop you. No, you can use spring return actuators. The spring return actuator will still operate as a double acting in effect because spring return actuators are double acting with a spring inside. So the unit will have springs inside here to send it in one direction or the other, send it over and the air to send it back. So we will still have air piped into both ports, but on the failure of air supply and electric supply, so everything is exhausted, the internal spring will push the ball valve back to its closed or prior loaded position. That'll be the same with this too. You could also have this as a spring to close or fail safe device as well. But you must power the air in one direction and power it in the other. So one direction we have the spring and air pushing, the other direction just the, just the air.